уважаемые коллеги, distinguished colleagues, friends, it's my pleasure to welcome the participants of a joint BRICS. SCO and uh, member states and observer states and the Eurasian Economic Union members heads of state. Within BRICS, we have a very good tradition that was first pioneered by our South African friends to invite heads of state that geographically and politically, geopolitically are close to the presiding country. Two years ago in Durban, we discussed what is needed to be done to strengthen ties with African countries. A year ago in Brazil, in Fortaleza, we exchanged views on how to jointly develop cooperation with South American states, and today we have an opportunity to speak on how to strengthen and deepen cooperation on the Eurasian space. All our groups and entities, as well as each of our countries represented here, have common interests in elaboration of optimal ways of sustainable development. We all strive for ensuring well-being and flourishing of our peoples. In the context of guaranteed peace and security, we cooperate on the principles of mutual respect, equal and equitable dialogue. At the same time, we have different historic, historical, cultural and religious traditions, social and economic lifestyles, but they don't bring us apart. On the contrary, they help us build a fair, and comprehensive partnership model that can provide for sustainable global governance in the 21st century. I'm convinced that only basing on this, we can seek and find solutions on um, solutions to acute global challenges and respond to threats that are topical and uh, relevant for everybody, such as the spread of weapons of mass, mass destruction, extremism, terrorism, uh, transborder crime, drug trafficking, shortages of food and potable water. The topic, the theme that was chosen for the outreach format is titled Ways of, Ins of Improving Well-being of Our Peoples. At this very high-profile meeting, it would be very good to discuss the prospects of the Eurasian development and touch upon how we can strengthen our ties with, our, with other regions of the world. Definitely, we have all the necessary conditions and prerequisites to expand the horizons of mutually advantageous cooperation, to coalesce the resources, natural resources and human resources and consumer markets that we have for a giant economic leap forward. We have unique opportunities to unlock the transit potential of the continent. I'm referring to the construction of new transport and logistical chains and the implementation of the Silk Road economic initiative, as well as developing new transport routes in Siberia and in the east of the Russian Federation. We can merge the dynamic markets of Asia and mature technologically advanced economies of Europe. At the same time, it will allow our countries to become more competitive and attract investors, become more appealing, create new jobs and deploy production sites. The growth in population, global population requires us to step up cooperation on food security step up agricultural development and reasonable use of water resources. And we should take care of the biosphere of our Earth in order to preserve our planet for future generation. And one more crucial thing, a fair and just world cannot be created without close cultural and humanitarian cooperation. This is why we want to promote and broaden contacts and culture, education, tourism, and science, 
with our BRICS, SCO, Eurasian Economic Union partners, as well as partners in other formats. On our initiative and with our active participation, we hold civil parliamentary youth forums and implement joint cultural programs, create inter high school associations such as network universities of SCO and BRICS. I'd like to invite all our friends and colleagues, heads of state and government, to speak on the topic of today's meeting and on other relevant issues. I thank you for your attention.